So let's just go under uh, video filters, effects, color correction, three way, and just kind of lighten it up, I guess. Hard to see what's going on, huh? Oh, that's that's pretty good. Maybe desaturate a little bit. Just go into matte, uh, mask feather, and just feather out the edges of this guy. So that's looking a little bit better, huh? The placement's still really bad, but uh, you're getting the idea. In fact, it'd be good if we uh, rotated this guy, huh? So you can do all this stuff in Final Cut. It's just um, not as fun. I'm just gonna put it that way, not as fun to do. Let's move this guy over here. You have the same thing as an After Effects with keyframes. So I can actually <coughs> choose where, um, put down these keyframes, these little diamonds, move to the future, see where I've moved, and kind of just move this accordingly. So are you guys ready to see the mega hella awesome effect you just created? Let's uh, I'm not gonna open it full screen because it might destroy my computer, but here it goes. This is the worst effect I've ever made in my life. It doesn't even play back. I like that effect. That's pretty cool. It's like a you know Rocky Horror Picture Show kind of thing here. Mouth spotlight. Mouth spotlight. What else we got here? I'm just gonna go into After Effects for this one. Yeah, go. <laughs> it really helps to have a fast computer for all this stuff, I hate to say. Alright, um, so, by dragging this down into this guy, you create a new composition with that footage. So this is from my friend Richard's Battle for Burglador. Let's hear it for Battle for Burglador! <laughs> um, we're gonna cut out this with just a, uh, a mask shape. We can change the mask to subtract. And now we've got a hole in our TV which we can adjust if it's not quite exactly right. And we can put something behind it. Let's find something to put behind it. Uh, a car maybe, yeah. Sounds like a good idea. I like cars. So now they're watching TV, right? Let's make this a little bit better. I'm gonna um, copy and paste this layer. I'm gonna find the mask options here. Set it from subtract to add. So that basically reverses the mask. Instead of saying, I'm gonna only take what's outside the mask, I'm gonna take now what's inside the mask. This is kind of getting ahead of myself, but uh, you know, it's gonna be fun. You know, just, just trust me on this one, it's gonna be cool. I'm gonna change the uh, transfer mode to screen. And now when I take this solo layer off, you can see what it does for comping in. Now we've got it looks kind of more like it's uh, actually on the TV versus um, before, if I turn this layer off, that's just too strong, right? There's no, none of the reflections that would be on the TV. I'm gonna dial back the opacity here, and then you have an effect that looks, it looks a little bit more realistic than if it wasn't there. Just creating a little bit more reflections on that surface to show that there's a screen there, right? So it's not just like dropped straight in. Okay, that was boring. I'm gonna show you something better. Uh, let's see what we got here. Okay, so this is, uh, this is important. This is where you might actually use something like this besides color grading uh, for these uh, geometric uh, shapes. I'm just gonna drag this down here. Uh, I don't want anyone to know my address. Oh my God. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this footage here. So now I've got two layers of it. I'm gonna use this uh, square tool like that. So I'm gonna solo the top layer. You can see I've just selected, I've isolated the, uh, the, the door plate on my home. I'm gonna take this into here and I'm gonna choose a blur. Yeah, try to steal my identity now, huh? Yeah. 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 So now it's, now it's blurred out. I'm gonna probably have to animate that over time, but again, using those little keyframe options, we can actually track with the door, if uh, the door is moving, or we can do down, uh, an actual motion tracker and kind of, kind of sync with the footage a little bit more. Um, it looks much better if you do an actual motion track, but uh, that's a cool way if you like have a logo that you want to get rid of. It's kind of non-obtrusive. Like, I mean, that almost looks like it could be legit, right? Like you shot like a, a blurred out box on the door, right? Uh, yeah, anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, <laughs> let's go back to the presentation. All right, so uh, what do we got here? All right, so user defined masks. So um, you saw how we could use just plain geometric shapes, but sometimes you just want to get like a bicep or something, you know? Yeah. Um, so they can be drawn by hand. So uh, Compi the uh, Bezier brush, uh, the reason Compi's in this presentation is because Bezier curves oh are very important. Oh my god! Oh god damn it! Bezier curves! I'm so excited! I can't even hear it! And then if you move this thing, then, then the curve changes! You can do it forever! 
Copy, buddy. Yeah. Take it down a notch. Oh, I'm sorry. I just kind of... I get excited around busy calves. You don't understand if you want busy brush. I, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to go, okay? No, I need that for my... my no, no, that's cool. I'm just going to take this and I'm, I'm going to go, okay? Yeah. Uh, oh. Copy. Come on, man. Be cool. Yeah, be gentle with that Bessie. Yeah, it sounded right. like he was having sex with her too. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Okay, uh, so basically, you saw when he was moving that Bessie curve around, right? You uh, click and drag on these guys, you create two points, and then if you move these around, you can change how sharp the curve is. The idea that you don't wanna like, you know, if I was making this guy, see how many points are on his back? I don't need that many points. And the more points I create, the more points I have to animate with that stopwatch, right? So uh, this bird is a much better example of, of a good layout. That means I only have to move like, say, two of these guys uh, instead of, what is this, four? When I want to move one, one shape. So that's why you want to, um, and you create less jitter that way when you have less points. Um, so let's, uh, yeah, yeah. You feeling that? I'm feeling it. Oh, this is kind of interesting. So um, <clears throat> everyone's seen this shot in Pokemon Apocalypse, right? Where is he? Right? Yeah. yeah. This shot is actually this. What? Whoa. Jesus. Wait a second. That's not me. How did I get into that shot? <laughs> this was uh, this was hand rotoed. In fact, you can see the if you like go really slow, see how it's kind of soft in my hair. You can actually see. Um, your hair is always soft though. It is. Yeah. You should touch it sometime. Um, not now. Uh, <laughs> you've got like a black edge around this thing. That's because I didn't get close enough to the hair, but just kind of a quick effect when it's playing back, you don't notice it almost. So because we didn't do this on a green screen, we actually did it with um, this shot here. We couldn't do a luma key because there's a lot of dark values in me. Uh, I had to just hand key it. So um, here's another shot we had to hand, uh, hand key. I'm gonna bring that into After Effects and let's just take a look at uh, what happens, huh? Yeah. Oh my God, what? Say yes, say yes. Yes, ignore, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna drag this down to this guy again, creates a composition with my exact settings that I need. So what we would do for a shot like this is uh, just grab this guy and start working away at it. It's easier if you zoom in, of course. In fact, I'm gonna have to. Oh, hand tool! What? Press spacebar to get that hand tool, it's kind of useful. Spacebar! Gotta get that head. Oh, oh my god, didn't mean to do that. And so on, right? <coughs> I'm not gonna do this whole thing, I'm just gonna kinda like uh, wing it out here because I get bored of this. Um, but basically, say if the, what you want to get rid of was only on this side, you'd only have to do that side, really. It's whatever's gonna be behind him, right? So now there's transparency, now there's an alpha channel. The problem is, he moves. And uh, I, I try to tell him, don't move, don't do anything, right? Just be like a, a still image, but he, he wouldn't do it. Um, so since he moved, I'm just gonna go into a point in time when he moved a lot, like there, zoom back in, and now we have to adjust those points. So it's like drag it up to match. Or you can do this, make it look yeah, really, really good. Like that. But uh, yeah, that's the idea is you just have to do it frame by frame by frame. Uh, since I did this before there was uh, CS5, do you guys have CS5? You do? Oh my God! There's a new thing here called the Roto Brush. Now I haven't tried this out before yet, but I'm gonna show you how to use this Roto Brush. If we double click on this guy, and we had the rotor brush selected. We can say to After Effects, this is what I want to keep. All right? Shrek. Shrek, apparently. <laughs> this is how they made Shrek. There, and whoa, look at that, that's crazy. And if I press play, it's gonna actually go forward in time and kind of guess where he is. Isn't that crazy? I had to, I used to have to do this by hand, right? Frame by frame. Now a computer does it for me. That looks actually pretty good, huh? Wow. I'm kind of pissed that I had to do this. It took me like all day to do this. Anyways.
let's get back to the presentation because uh, that's animating uh, those. Uh, whoa, whoa. Uh, oh, that was spotlight. Wrong one. Wrong one. Okay. <clears throat> Woo. Nice fade out. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Yeah. Great. Good stuff. I think my PowerPoint is broken. <laughs> oh, no, oh, 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 keys. Oh, no, oh, God, no. What's going on? Oh, oh. Uh, yes, Luma Keys is next. So, I mean, that's really boring, right? Doing things frame by frame. I wish there was a way to automate alpha channel creation. There is. Now, Luma King isolates things based on its uh, luminescence, right? It's uh, how dark or light it is. So here we got this uh, little steamroller in the upper left. Um, uh, <laughs> I chose to only get rid of what is like the very top luminescence value. So um, as you can see, the shadow still remains because it's not quite the top. And now I can put it in Lord of the Rings! <laughs> what else, right? Um, same thing with these cats, right? Like um, here we can basically get rid of the couch because it's a little bit darker uh, than them. This actually worked out really well, surprisingly. But you see that the wall is actually the same tone as they are, so it stayed. So then we have to use a garbage mat, or you know those user-defined masks, to say, hey, I only want these guys, right? Nothing else. Um, so this, it's not always that you can use a Luma mat to pull out something perfectly. So more often what we'll use this effect for is stuff like this. So in the bottom right, we can take just the highlights, and we can say color grade them down. So uh, here I'll go back to the original image. You can see how it's darker now. We can also add a bloom effect on just the highlights. That's how any glow operation works, is it looks at just the luminescence values and it says, hey, I can add a, add a, add a glow to that. And it does. So here I'm going to show you how to use the, uh, that principle to create some cool effects in Final Cut. What? Final Cut? Yeah, Final Cut. All right. Because, you can, again, you can use all this stuff in uh, Final Cut. You don't have to go to uh, After Effects. Okay, so, so here we got a, oh man, this shot's kind of heavy. I don't know if my computer can handle it. Anyways, I'm going to double click on it. So we, in Final Cut, if you double click on it, it brings it into the source. You need to do that if you're going to apply effect on anything. Go video filter. Do, 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 do. Uh, keying, right. <laughs> I use this program a lot. Uh, Luma keying. And, oh, it's going the opposite way. I actually want to keep those highlights. So what we're going to do is we're going to key out the darker. And uh, let's uh, kind of dial these around. So you can see I can just, uh, I'm, my goal is I'm going to try to just get these guys up here. So it's fairly easy to see, right? I'm just trying to get those, uh, those weird skull things. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer by holding down Alt. Now if you release Alt, it makes a duplicate. It's pretty cool, huh? You don't have to copy and paste to do anything. If you just hold down Alt, problem is if you hold down Alt and you don't release Alt, it does this. Oh! It's terrible. I don't know why they, they do that. Anyways, so what's going to happen? I'm going to take this bottom layer. I'm going to get rid of that Luma key we just created. So now we have on the bottom layer absolutely ordinary footage. So uh, on this layer on the top now, now we have just this layer here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a garbage mat because I don't want her face to be affected by this effect that we're going to do. I'm going to go into video filters, mat, mask shape. Go into here, adjust this to be basically where her grill is, uh, and invert it. Pretty good. Um, video filters, mat, I'm going to feather it just in case. You should always feather your masks. Whoa. Feathering everything. I don't know why it's doing that. Oh, because the Luma key is considered a map. So let's just drag this down here. It's kind of an order of operations thing, I guess. So I turn this up. Yeah, now it's just feathering the uh, the one. It's not feathering the, the Boga skulls. So now let's go back and I'm going to uh, start this layer. And you might be saying, but Kyle, it looks the same. Well, it is. Basically, what we have is we have the normal footage below and we have the uh, luminescence channel above. Uh, so if we have them both together, we can now only affect uh, this stuff over here. 